check my check okay. okay it's time i will start nobody joined today mm. okay <coughs> so this is the third part uh, so this is the third lecture and we will be continuing our nonlinear comics right now in the first part we were we had introduced just two character batman and joker then in next part second part we also considered one more uh, two face now in this part we would be having two more character and one is ringmaster which is this guy making a lot of rings and one more riddler <coughs> okay so so this time we will be introducing two more characters and as we go down the line we would be just uh, relating the main thing uh, the those concept with these characters so right now these two uh, what new characters are confusion and the question so in this class i would be asking a lot of questions uh, so let's see if we can answer those questions so these questions will be it will be see, it see, it will seem like that uh, the answer is just like very simple answer but it's not there is some trick to it which is actually the part of nonlinear uh, dynamics is you think that you will predict it but actually it is doing something else so moving on so these two characters uh, we will see yeah with respect to time frame uh, i had a lot of doubt uh, coming in the mail some asked to go slow uh, because um, the problem is uh, not many people know language multipliers and those things so hence this class we would be restricting ourselves to just development of the equations and regarding weekly assignments actually if you watch the videos you can easily perform those these are for the in-depth question so I am taking uh, the questions which are much more uh, complex and uh, which can be solved using these uh, concepts so in that one thing I provide is language multiplier so today we will be covering in detail what actually those are and how those are useful <coughs> so in this class we will be only performing uh, language principle and we will be going much detail about it because we are uh, in habit of doing everything using Newtonian laws so we draw FBTs and then we try to find which forces are there then we find their directions then we find the equation of motion by equating the forces but uh, it is not that scientific way to derive the equation of motion there are two more much more uh, more scientific uh, methods by which we can find equation of motion in which one is language principle another is extended Hamilton principle so Ham Hamilton principle and language principle actually they both are counterpart of each other if uh, the b more basic is extended Hamilton principle and there is much more basic to it something called calculus of variation so we will today first introduce our character so Riddler, so Riddler as the name suggests, it gives some riddles, okay, riddles are pahilia or uh, the questions which, uh, the so a poem in form of a question and those things, so today I won't be making those poem because that will be a problem for me and you also and actually the term terminology which you, we use is uh, not for uh, rhyming purpose so let's stick with Riddler asking some basic question but which have deeper meanings okay 
so we will go for riddler that <coughs> his history is that riddler fixation with puzzles started from a young age when he was a boy his teacher announced a contest would be held to see who would who could solve a puzzle in the fast, fastest time so i will just fastest time okay now riddler wanted to prove he could win so he broke into the school at night and stole it he stole that uh, uh so what he did he just uh, went into the uh, school at night and so he did the bad thing and uh, okay so then he managed to solve the puzzle in under the minute so he cheated and then he solved the puzzle he won the competition earning the uh, earning a book of riddles so what he got was a book of riddles and he was addicted to this thrill of winning and now what the riddler's main mind is <coughs> that he try to give riddles for uh, which he only knows the answer so if really some intellectual person solves that he kind of get very angry so that is the basic of riddler so when he grew up he worked at a carnival also so this is very important he worked at a carnival carnival is kind of a circus type of environment and he he cheat the customer out of money with their mind game so he used to ask question and say bet on it and then they would bet on it and then he reveal the answer which would be the other bet so he kind of cheat the person so eager to find new challenge uh, riddler took the identity of a rid so hence his came the other identity came as riddler so his super powers are he is genius level intellect because actually he designed the question in such a way that nobody could solve them he is a criminal mastermind now he is skilled inventor engineer and escape artist so this <laughs> batman and all the themes of batman are <laughs> actually engineering related only so that is one more fascinating thing <laughs> why i wanted to do this now uh, riddler utilizes the complex riddles puzzles and lethal contraptions <coughs> so today now we will be starting our story now batman since riddler is already a villain super villain so batman has tracked the riddler to a abandoned library on top of a skyscraper so there is a skyscraper a building a huge building yes 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 okay 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 yeah we can uh, start away with that okay so i will just put it a new page yes yes please ask away okay let's uh, comment on that uh, so which question is it <coughs> so this is assign an assignment which assignment I think I have a sign number two. So let me check if I have. Okay, assignment number two, three. Okay. Okay, actually, I haven't written that. Uh, I have not uploaded that. So, uh, can you tell what the question is? Is it theoretical or something numerical? 
ओके आज कभी प्लीज ओके आई एम राइटिंग ओके so this is two initial condition right one so we have uh, u also there x dot is equal to u and u dot is equal to minus x right <coughs> so if we can convert into uh, two degree freedom okay we wanted to uh, we wanted to uh, compute using rk4 method rk method okay mm. yeah what is the question mm. Mm. okay mm -hmm. okay hmm. okay hmm. so have you tried it solving in matlab or something so you use od45 great hmm. hmm. Zero point one and zero point zero one. Okay. Okay. So you have doubt here, like in this part. Okay. Okay. We can go by different method now. uh let's say we will go by uh <coughs> we'll try to solve, convert this to one degree of freedom question so this one degree of, sorry this is one or first order this is also first order so let's convert this into two uh, second order okay so u dot means now x dot of dot so it will be double dot is equal to minus x okay now this comes at to be plus x is equal to 0 okay and if i uh, use analogous method by m x double dot plus k x is equal to 0 so this is our vibration equation so i can say that m is equal to 1 and k is equal to also equal to 1 okay So omega will be also one, right? <coughs> But regarding amplitude, what will be the amplitude be? We can find it using uh, so we have a simple vibration equation. So it is in sine and cosine term, right? So the response will be somewhat like x of t is equal to. Uh, Capital A naught sine t plus because omega is equal to one plus b naught cos t, right? Now we just have to we can find it this thing also, which will be again A naught cos t minus b naught sine t, correct? so now we just have to put the values and see if what is the maximum amplitude we get okay or one more thing we can do we can open desmos and we can plot it okay so 
uh, okay let's uh, see so you are getting this amplitude okay let's find a not b not for both cases so case one uh, when we put 0 0.01 is equal to a not now sign at 0 will be 0 so this will be only b not and second is dot term so a naught will be is equal to 0 0.001 okay and we know that amplitude amplitude is equal to under square <coughs> a naught square plus b naught square okay so which will be coming nearly to one only 0 0.01 so i think this is correct right hmm. so it will be near that only because if you will take um, a naught ka square so it will be much more lesser than that okay hmm. no no it is nothing wrong it's like something is missing there so let's see what 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 the problem is okay next is when we take the other one so our a naught and b naught are both same now if you find the amplitude it will be under root 2 ok roughly like this so I think it will be uh, 1.414 so it's like 0 1414 so it should be like this amplitude so it is neither of us <laughs> so <laughs> okay it is not this not this <laughs> no 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 those are uh, by NPTEL team only so those are official TAs uh, you can actually ask this in discussion forum okay ha huh, ha huh. so if some issue is there i think if we put everything in here it is it, it is not any problem but we should either be yes yes hi hi man Ye yes mm. okay assignment 4 it, it yet to be uh, come out right solution okay okay <coughs> one second ha huh. Here also plus okay. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, you not epsilon. u2 okay u1 u2 okay oh we don't have to go to MATLAB for this uh, so <coughs> you have to put these values so uh, all these u are function of time right we just have to put the values so uh, what is the problem like i couldn't get <laughs> okay okay so you have to pick up the terms right 
that thing we have to do so you are having problem in this uh, picking up the term no i am asking do you have are you having the problem in this ki you are not able to pick up the terms or ha ha so it will be like you will be putting these values here right <coughs> and then you would be uh, picking out the terms where there is epsilon or where there is epsilon square or where there is no epsilon so it's like zero order okay so you would be get uh, so you will get three set of equations so what you are doing is mm -hmm. i don't know what option oh, can you please tell me option a b c d One point two by <laughs> okay. Hmm. This. Hmm. What? What is change in option B? So instead of pl uh, plus, there is minus. Okay, that is the only difference. Okay, so you are and here. Okay, it's third. So I hope this changes. Okay, and option D. Just zero point six is there, right? And plus CC. What is it? Okay. <coughs> plus here something else. Oh, this for all, right? Every everything. Okay. So higher term. Okay, so okay. So you have doubt in this that um, which option should it be, right? Okay, so the general understanding is uh, we will first assume that um, this is the assumption given, assuming this, right? and when we will put putting everything there so now there are two conditions so we will start away with u is equal to u naught so also write with t also okay otherwise we get confused generally So just find out this derivative also. So it's just a uh, trivial statement, but it actually the confusion doesn't happen, which is today's uh, lectures theme. <laughs> okay, and similarly for double dot also same thing. Okay. Now you have to just put these values. Like so this is nothing but 
सो टी राइट टी एवरीवेयर तो भाई ओके हम्म सो टेक दिस ओके सो दिस थिंग पुट इट हेयर देन दिस थिंग पुट इट हेयर देन अगेन put it here also there will be cubic term solve that okay now just have to see where these things are not present wherever the epsilon is not present that is your u not statement okay then you have to just solve that linear equation this is now non linear because of this it's non linear yes cube cube term is non linear hence what is the problem is happening we cannot solve it analytically it is very tough so i think the solution you will get by this okay okay uh, so uh, durga prasad uh, i will get back to you okay what is the problem here or we can actually discuss in discussion forum that is also good and uh, uh, mahindra we can you can you can check with this if none of the solution matches okay you can just message me we can work upon it okay yes hmm <laughs> yeah there are two thing first thing uh, if you directly ask me what is the answer i cannot tell you okay but if you can say ki where i am stuck that that thing in that i can help okay <laughs> just like uh, mahindra did right now <laughs> okay so the steppings i can help you with like how to solve that question what are you missing what you should know more okay okay oh ha huh, where is the story i think story went away somewhere you have to bring the story back huh. okay so hmm <coughs> we are back to our story here what happens that batman has tracked the riddler okay mm. okay already so batman has tracked the riddler to a abandoned library on the top of the skyscraper so skyscraper is important there actually something is happening oh okay 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 no I, it's better to write because then i will be adding these questions okay hmm yes okay you ask with the in question what you are not understanding and i will help you with that okay for example uh, you don't understand how to uh, like in our in your problem how to put that into matlab that that also you can ask okay uh, i i was thinking to take matlab as whole one session in which i will be doing only matlab so we will be designing it in next to next uh, session okay so apart from that if you have any doubt anywhere in where you are not able to understand okay you can ask away you can message also okay so anything okay, okay. <coughs> and this class is just for the making the make it more making it more interactive because you know uh, you all um, like all these students here are actually we are all from the same colleague community because uh, it is advanced course so actually we all know the basics just that to connect things we have to ask away some questions so hence uh, let's treat this as a colleague community okay we all are in the same boat and we are asking question just to solve the problem okay so you can ask away um, like question you which are bothering you any time yes yes okay okay so uh 
मेथड्स ऑफ मल्टीपल स्केल मैं देखो आई विल बी टेकिंग ऑल दिस काइंड ऑफ फिजिकल मीनिंग ऑफ दिस मेथड्स इन नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट क्लास बिकॉज अप टू वी आई वॉन्ट टू गो टू गो वेरी स्लोली बिकॉज टू कवर ईच एंड एवरी टॉपिक सो आई कैन गिव यू आइडिया अबाउट वॉट डज इट मीन जनरली सो वॉट हैपन दैट लेट्स टेक केस ऑफ सो यू आर यू इंटरेस्टेड इन कॉस्मिक सॉरी एस्ट्रोनॉमी एंड दोज थिंग्स लाइक प्लानट्स मून कैन यू अंडरस्टैंड बाय दैट सोलर सिस्टम ये आई एम आई एम कमिंग टू दैट सो वी हैव लेट से वी हैव अवर सन एंड नथिंग एल्स ओके सो वी नो डैट इट विल बी इन रेस्ट ओनली ओके बट इफ यू हैव वन मोर सन और लेट से अर्थ इफ यू हैव स्मॉल बॉडी अर्थ वी नो डैट इट विल गो अराउंड इट अ परफेक्ट सर्कल राइट now uh, if you will say there is one more body then the problem becomes very complex now the problem becomes of three body problem which is a huge problem in dynamics three body problem okay so to understand ki what is happening we actually what we do is we forget about moon for now and we will only concentrate between this two body problem and once we understand what is happening in two body problem we will add something extra okay something extra and this that extra is also called perturbation okay so these methods are part of perturbation method in which now we are talking about some parameter to perturb and if we perturb that parameter we try to see ki what are their effects so now the thing is about perturbing and then seeing its effects okay so multiple um, the method of multiple scale is about seeing the effects in different time domain or we can say in different scales no no scale can be defined for anything scale can be physical scale okay but in our case it generally time scale because uh, or in dynamics everything is uh, yes time dependent yes ha huh. so we are looking at different time scale let's say there is one microsecond of time then there is our second of time then there is a uh, minute of time okay so what we are doing we are observing the whole phenomena in this time scale so if let's say if we have some dynamic event and if you observe that in a uh, millisecond it will be very slow motion okay and you the governing equation will be very linear but if you will go for very high speed then you have to take non linearity into account okay so that is meant by these things like this is our linear scale and yes and these are the perturbation item and these are our non linear Uh, equation terms so how much order we go it it is uh, more better okay so inherently everything is non linear and we are trying to linearize it so this is a linear form so method of multiple scale is also like that only so in perturbation method what we do we perturb the system and this we call something book keeping parameter and scaling parameter so these thing i will be starting next week up uh, for when we are finding a solution of non linear equation right now i am in the developing of on uh, equations okay in general equations so we will come to that okay so did you get uh, what i uh, am uh, like this multiple scale why its name multiple scale did you get why why it's called multiple scale okay okay Mm-hmm. Okay. For for example, we can take this equation only. In this question, this was a non-linear equation, right? 
and if you wanted to solve this nonlinear equation analytically it will be it it can be done but it will be very tough and if nonlinearity is much more greater then we cannot solve it actually okay so that is like the limit of our situation okay hence we are uh, going through this course because we wanted to make some method by which we can actually uh, solve these questions okay so what we can do is we can uh, start with a simple approximation so this is a simple approximation okay so it is kind of a perturbing the system what we are approximating is like perturbing the system we are thinking this system would be behaving like this okay now when we will put the conditions as such now this equation will be converted into something which has uh, no the thing is it will be non-linear but when you will be solving this in individually u0 u1 and u2 it will be linear okay or we can make it linear by approximation okay so approximation means we are approximating a system is kind of we are just uh, averaging the system of all the nonlinearities and we are thinking ki it will work and it works for uh, weak nonlinearities the problem becomes much more uh, problematic when we consider strong nonlinear nonlinearities okay we hope uh, okay so we can come back to our so right now what we are doing is uh, part of a uh, like uh, basic course only we are trying to find uh, equations of motion okay um, so do you all know why it's, it, uh, it is all connected to calculus of variation huh? all Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So uh, I will continue with the comics or or the story. So now Riddler is there, and um, now Riddler he says ki he asks a very unpredictable question. He asks, "Do you know the origin of calculus of variation?" So anybody can answer. Yeah. So do you know what calculus of variation means? Okay, we know Langridgean equation of motion, right? And we have also covered, like I have not covered, but in syllabus it's covered extended Hamilton principle. But do you know where that came from? Okay, that is a very prime question that where all these theorems come from, like where these, all these principle comes from. Okay, it all comes from calculus of variation. It is a huge topic in mathematics and it is kind of basics of all the mechanics. I am saying all the mechanics. So hence Riddler asked this question, ki, do you know the origin of calculus of variation? So it's a very grand question he is asking. Batman raises an eyebrow, calculus of variation? What does this have to do with anything? Right, right now what you are thinking, okay, why this guy is teaching me calculus of variation, right? <laughs> so. So now uh, the Riddler says everything is connected to it. Okay, so calculus of variation is a branch of mathematics that deals with finding the most optimal path between two points. We will look at that. It is the key to unlocking so many secrets from movement of planets to strategies of the army. Actually, the question which I have asked you about sun, moon and three body problem that can also be solved using uh, calculus of variation okay and even the huge political or strategies of army that too can be solved using calculus of variation it is just the finding a optimal path between two points okay now uh, batman says i don't have time for our games so what are you planning so riddler says ki i uh, just to outsmart you uh, i have some riddles you just solve them okay so for the uh, point that this calculus of variation is also used in 
Hamilton's principle. So we will be uh, again requiring all these things. Okay. So let's go what Kalkutta variation means. So it actually has something called delta operator. Huh. So this delta operator has some properties. So now I'm coming full into maths. Okay, if there is some math uh, student, then you would understand perfectly. But as an engineering student, we only require these properties. <coughs> First one is differentiation rule. So you will see that if oh, so okay first i will explain what are the thing first of all is functional what is a functional it's just function of function okay so yeah let's say there is something some independent variable called x okay and there is some dependent variable called y which is dependent on x okay now function functional f is defined as some function of y also okay so this is independent variable this is dependent variable and this one is functional y can also be called as function function of x right so functional means function of function okay so now if we have some functional which will be obviously function of because this will be equal to okay so it is dependent on x also y also or it may be derivative of y or no there is no that uh, y of de derivative of y okay it could be anything <coughs> sorry so now following property hold true now delta operator is like a ghost okay it can um, go inside the di uh, differentiation and same thing can be said for the integration also it can anytime go inside the uh, differentiation integration it can come out okay so it's kind of ghost you will just write ghost so first and second uh, properties understood now third is called distributive properties in which uh, it has a distributive property distributive property means if you have something sum so it it will it can individually add to that or it can combinedly add to that okay then we know multiplication rule like if we multiply anything it can come or go out of it so it's all ghost properties properties of a ghost they can go anywhere now the problem comes when we are uh, doing the multiplication in multiplication what happens so these three properties are ghost but in multiplication what happens that it is first shared with something else and then other shared will in the other term it will shared with other word so it's just like uh, multiplying of the uh, different uh, when we are dif differentiating and then we do the multiplication of a so differentiation of a multiplication so it behaves something like that so as it as differentiation of function similarly division also and when there is some power then also it it is all like the differentiation only the problem is this fourth fifth sixth there is no problem in like you can easily understand up to one to six property the seventh property is the main one it says when if uh, functional is just function of fx means there is uh, only there is no y if there is no y then that um, 
delta of that f becomes zero. <coughs> so this is the main thing. So this means that if there is no y, the function will be treated as constant. Okay. So if it's constant, uh, the differentiation of a constant is zero, right? So it is something like that. So this is seventh property and eighth property is also like that only. So it kind of behave that it is constant. Okay. X is, X is constant or function of X is constant. Now, the riddler gave his first riddle that if some functional is given, if some functional is given, then we have to find first variation. So first variation means this thing. Okay. Hmm. So you, you can also work upon this. I uh, will go term by term. So delta f means that first of all I am using the uh, distributive property in which I can distribute the delta to all the terms. Now I will be taking all these terms one by one and solving them. So our first term y cube it will just become 3 y squared del y. Now this uh, this thing is also called del del okay delta operator so del of y cube is equal to 3y squared del y so I have used property number I think 8 now second is del of uh, y dash cube and y square so I can I will first use multiplication property and I will get this then division but here we won't use division because the other thing is just function of x so it will be acting as a constant okay so any x here will be treated as constant so again fourth is also the same thing and fifth will be zero because it's just function of x I think you would have understood ki it will be something 3y square plus 2y dash cube y plus uh, 1 by x plus x this is for del y <coughs> there will be one more this term because it is having del y dash okay so that I have written in other term 3y dash square of and y square okay this one so just check now moving on to riddle 2 he gave a pendulum and he said he derive equation of motion using calculus of variation okay so now uh, we will use language equation of motion here but I will explain this language equation motion in later uh, term so we have to find Lagrangian something called Lagrangian and once we find that out we can use Euler language equations okay what are these we will come to it in next so first of all the step is to define independent degree of freedom okay it is very important you have to find independent degree of freedom we know that degree of freedom is always independent only but we have to find those coordinates which are independent if we cannot find those uh, independent coordinates we have to at least find the constraint equation okay so that also we will be covering in uh, next so now Hamilton principle so Hamilton principle uh, will be taught next uh, session that is its statement the path followed by pendulum is only it's one along with line integral of the Lagrangian is extremum so it is all about uh, uh, optimum path okay 
सो हियर अगेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट पाथ ओनली सो हेमिल्टन प्रिंसिपल सीज कि इफ इन अ लैंग्वेज इन इफ यू टेक इंटीग्रल ऑफ इट एंड इफ यू फाइंड मैक्सिम और मिनिमम ऑफ इट देन इट इज सेड एज ऑप्टिमल पाथ ओके सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज एक्चुअली बोथ लैंग्वेज इन इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन एज वेल एज हेमिल्टन लॉ ऑफ इक्वेशन ओके दिस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इट कम्स फ्रॉम द कैलकुलस ऑफ वेरिएशन ओनली ओके सो इन एक्सटेंडेड हेमिल्टन प्रिंसिपल ऑल्सो वी विल बी यूजिंग हाउ टू यूज दिस डेल ऑपरेटर सो दैट विल बी नेक्स्ट टास्क See, all these can be done in symbolic software, but I wanted to convey the meaning of what these operators mean and why it is so important. Okay, because just putting into the code and finding the solution is one thing, but getting to the meaning of it that is the different thing, and the uh, that is the more basic thing to why it's happening. Okay. ओके ओके ऑल राइट सो वाई सॉल्विंग दिस वी विल फाइनली गेट अवर इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन ओके वॉट आर दी स्टेप्स दैट इट्स जस्ट वी आर वी आर यूजिंग द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ डेल्टा एंड वी आर पुशिंग डेल्टा इन साइड सो डेट देर इज ओनली वन delta here you can see only one delta is here nowhere else okay it's like we are taking the delta common and once by the rules if we do that if we do that okay we will get equation of motion whatever is less left inside this is left inside right so this is equation of motion directly okay and there is one more benefit of using um, hamilton's law that i will be covering in next session ah yes man okay so now this is called okay okay great now we'll look at the euler language equation so these equations are called euler language equation which comes out from the hamilton principle okay these are the relation these relation that we can directly use in our mechanics so first of all we will try to learn what its physical meaning is so for the for that only the riddler is here for with a very beautiful question <coughs> so are you ready for riddle 3 i hope you are otherwise i will become riddler asking question okay Where is the story? Okay, story is gone again. Let me bring back that story. Okay, so there was some text written. I think it's it lost somewhere. <coughs> so the question was uh, such that riddler had um, in some distance so i said this skyscraper was there right so this is that skyscraper meaning a very long building and on top of it the library was there and their conversation was going on there only now uh, for rid riddle 3 the riddler said to batman that at point b now they were at point a and at point b there was one girl in which on which uh, the riddler has put a bomb vest okay so some bomb is already planted there and now riddler say to you can you protect that girl as soon as possible so in where in less time how you can reach to point a to point b 
in least time okay it raises two question one is called geodesic and another is called brachistochrone now geodesic just means that find a path y of x now this thing can be written as y and this direction can be written as x okay now uh, geodesic path means finding a path y of x which covers minimum distance between point a and b in other word find geodesic of x y plane so if there is some point a and some point b and it is asked to find geodesic path it means the minimum distance so you all know that on a plane okay if there is a plane and if you want to find a minimum distance it will be just equation of that line right? so line ka equation right but what it can it can be set for uh, minimum time also here minimum distance is there so it's called geodesic but riddler didn't ask that riddler asked minimum time so there is second type of problem where we have to find a path which covers minimum time travel between point a to b in presence of a gravitational field also there is gravity acting downwards so or we can also reframe this question into different uh, ideologies first is find the curve of fastest slide so if you have a slide so you need to find the equation of that slide so it can be a straight line also it can be a circular path also it could be any like it could be these these kind of any like line parabola circle cycloid or 6 degree of uh, polynomial it could be nth degree of polynomial also so we need to find minimum path minimum time okay so the next is find the curve joining two points along with a frictionless bead can descend in the minimum time so again this is the same as fastest slide and it can be also reframed as what shape should a roller coaster track have to be so that the car travels from high point a to low point b as fast as possible so you can ask these questions in any of this line the main thing is minimum time or in this case is fastest slide or in this minimum time uh, as fast as possible okay so here all the terms are for minimum time previously everything was minimum distance now this is very interesting question it it looked like very simple question find the minimum distance but on a earth like if the plane is not so if let's say earth okay if earth is there and it's a sphere and you want to go from point a to point b on earth will that be still straight line no because uh, we have to travel on the surface of the earth we cannot tunnel it out okay so hence this geodesic problem are of interest so there those problems are required but right now we are not uh, covering that ge geodesic problem we can go for derivation of that but it is very simple like distance of between point a and b uh, can be written as this so what we are doing is we are uh, so in any derivation you would have seen that we take a small point okay and we kind of enlarge it so here we have taken ds very small and if we enlarge that ds we can have two component dy and dx 
and that we can write as ds is equal to under root dx square plus dy square okay and this if we can integrate from a to point b this ds this is called uh, integration right because we take small small part and then integrate from one point to another point Th this is only what calculus of variation means so now we have a functional so this is a functional ready where y is nothing but dependent variable and x is independent variable okay next we will write a little uh, language in equation which we have derived in the previous slide and we will go via that and finally we will be getting something like this and if you provide boundary condition it will be equation of a straight line okay so now I'll, i ask you a question that <coughs> so riddler has this options a b i can write here only a is line b is parabola c is circle d is cycloid and e is 6 degree polynomial and f is others okay so can you guess which is the correct answer by which this uh, the Batman can descend in minimum time so that he can save the girl. Anyone want to try? Out of these options, which is the fastest, fastest time, which take fastest time or minimum time. Okay, so uh, similarly, as previous one, we need distance. Now here we need time. One second. <coughs> now here uh, we will be needing time. So first we will be defining the time. So you will be using very simple relationship dt is equal to ds by v. So v is velocity and if we go very if we can uh, put it very small then dt is equal to ds by v linear relationship ok. So first we have to find ds which we already calculated in the previous problem and dt we have to find now also v we have to find. Now V is influence of gravity, so that came out to be like this by using energy principle. So that gave us a functional T this, okay. Now we will use Euler language equation and also boundary condition, we will observe that the solution comes out to be cycloid. So our correct solution is cycloid. So out of these, if you can see this animation, like everything start at same point and you will observe that line the one who is following the line it is slowest and one who is going via parabola they are uh, second slowest the winner is cycloid and uh, just above cycloid the circle 
that to reach it but below uh, behind the cycloid and also if you take higher if you take higher uh, degree polynomial or which is lower than the cycloid that to have uh, that to come late than the cycloid so cycloid so using this knowledge of Brachistochrone problem Batman calculated the fastest path to reach the spot and diffuse the bomb preventing the disaster from occurring so what does this mean in our mechanics that is next question Euler language equation of motion has something called Langagen into it. Now this Langagen is equal to T minus U. So if there is some kinetic energy and some potential energy, so T minus U is Langagen. And if we put it as a functional, we get this which is called Euler Langagen equation of motion in mechanics. Now it has, it is not equal to zero, but two more quantities. This is called modified Euler equation, Euler language equation motion. So if there is some constraint forces, because we assume that all the degree of freedom are independent to each other, but there are many scenarios by which we cannot, by uh, watching, we cannot comment key if it's uh, independent or not and also in presence of non-conservative forces the theory fails To get the equation of motion, we use this uh, language and formulation. Now here, QI are generalized coordinate, not the degree of freedom. So we can be general about it. Like can, we can take any number of generalized coordinate. We will end up in equation of motion. And uh, FI are the non-conservative forces. They are typically forces such as friction. And CI is the constraint forces. So we need generalized coordinate Okay, we need generalized coordinate We need constraint equations A glimpse of it we have seen in the previous session and if we have these two we can find equation of motion now non uh, so conservative forces and non conservative forces can be summed up as <coughs> as u function u okay so this can also be equation of motion because the kinetic energy and the potential energy I have taken separately or the friction forces can also be written in term of relay dissipation function so these are all form of the same equation which is called as modified modified Euler language equation of motion <coughs> so we look at the pendulum again in which there was one physical coordinate or generalized coordinate And uh, there are two constant, constant, not constraints, constant. One is length is constant and the mass of the bob that is constant, okay? 
then we don't have any constraint in this equation degree of freedom hence become physical coordinate minus constraint which will be equal to 1 in this case and generalized coordinate is now our 1 so we start with physical coordinate so degree of freedom is 1 and if you can solve this we can find equation of motion this was already covered in the previous case now we are coming to point where instead of going with the theta or the angle we are going with the coordinates of the uh, xy plane now we know that those are physical coordinates but we need one more equation constraint equation which says that uh, length is constant length of the string is constant and which is given by this equation x square plus y square is equal to l square so this is the equation of constraint constraint and now degree of freedom is again 1 because n is equal to 2 and m is equal to 1 now generalized coordinate can be written as xt or yt but degree of freedom can is only 1 either of it if we say degree of freedom it will be either xt or yt or theta so only one any one okay now we can improve on this question where length is now varying so if length is varying and it is given by this relationship l0 minus ut so u is a speed of spooling so let's say this is a spool a uh, spool is something which kind of a thread like uh, where the thread is pulled in so that that is called uh, spooling it is something uh, when fishing rods have so here also we can see that we have physical coordinate as lt and uh, this theta t now we have constraint equation one constraint equation two physical coordinate so again this degree of freedom is one again how that problem looks like is first we will write constraint equation So xt is equal to lt sine of theta t then yt is equal to minus lt of cos theta t so we have taken direction positive x positive y we will also find the derivative of it next is we are finding the kinetic and potential energy of the mass <coughs> So we are just summing up half mv square then we will find potential energy which is mgy of t then we will find Langrigian which is t minus u So this is our language in L or our functional. Now we use language equation of motion. Now we know that constraint force is zero and Fi is also zero. So if you put everything we will find this equation of motion. So we always have to think what are the degree of freedom and why it's constant or why it is independent to each other. Now <coughs> let's take a look on one more problem in which 
figure shows a simple pendulum consisting of a string of length r and a bob of mass m that is attached to a support of mass capital m the support moves without friction on the horizontal plane find the equation of motion using el equation so it's same as the previous one we will find t then we will find u then we find the lagrangian and we will use the lagrangian equation to find equation of motion now we can observe here that when support is moving with some let's say constant velocity we uh, we just have this equation as uh, tan theta is equal to minus x acceleration of x by g Okay, so this is all about uh, application of language in equation, language equation. Now, we can assume that we can find equation of motion using Euler language in equation. But that is incorrect. because if we have some constraint in the equation then euler language equation uh, we cannot actually find equation of motion so let's say we have some constraint this is constraint number 1 okay sorry Hmm. Let's say we have constraint number one. This is second constraint, and this is third constraint, and this is u. Now constraints are bothering you. Now someone comes and. takes away your pain that is called language in multiplier <clears throat> now as riddler was near his defeat he clicked something okay and there were lot of rings formation and and one more villain come into the picture called ring master now his super powers are he can summon thing summon mean he can uh, make things in thin air so that it can he can make flying ring shocking rings paralyzing ring hypnotic rings and gears so in mechanical terms we can say he can make rings gears or all these terms which are having inertia okay instead of mass now we will be looking at the moment of inertia now batman was now on the hunt hunt for the ring master a notorious villain who used a spinning ring to hypnotize the victim and control their mind now batman track the ring master to an abandoned amusement park where he found that the villain standing atop a large spinning wheel the ring master taunted batman spinning the wheel faster and faster daring him to step forward and face him as the wheel spun batman struggled to keep his footing 
on the slippery surface using his keen balance and agility to stay upright. Meanwhile, the ringmaster continued to spin the wheel faster and faster, causing Batman to lose his balance and stumble. Suddenly, the ringmaster released the spinning ring from his grasp, sending it flying through the air towards Batman. The ring was spinning so quickly that it seemed to be in two places at once, creating, uh, creating a sense of non-linear motion that made it difficult to Batman to track. Now you can correlate this with pure chance and those things. Like something is spinning so fast that it it seems like it is present in many places. Does it happen to you anytime? Some pretty, uh, practical scenario where something is moving so fast that when you look at it you think that it is in many positions i think one example can be can you see the uh, f fan so if you look at this fan it seems that it is in different different position but actually it is revolving very fast Also, it gives a little bit hypnotic uh, idea, right? So, it hypnotizes. <laughs> so now, Ringmaster also uses similar concept. He try to uh, make things or revolve things. So there is rolling, spinning, and uh, so which also you'd have seen that whenever person are hypnotizing or as they are portrayed as hypnotizing someone you would have observed that there is always a pendulum <laughs> so uh, my point is why what is like vibration and hypnotizing people so there is a strange relationship between hypnotizing and vibration it is said that lower frequency uh, which is equal to frequency 1, 2, 3 those are the range where uh, people can be hypnotized because those are very observable range okay if we go for very higher frequency we cannot actually see that so hence we are not getting hypnotized to that and if we go for very low frequency the thing become very static to us so the best hypnotizing phase is where frequency is 1, 2, 3, 4 or number which you can observe it more clearly. Uh, you have seen that brain waves, uh, the style brain waves are also of this category. So hence in his subconscious mind the child is very eager to learn things. But if we go for adult then those brain waves we, we kind of generate delta brain waves which are much more higher. Uh, so if you'll go for some professional athlete or someone who memorizes or having a muscle memory so you would see that those are having higher frequencies but if you go for basic stuff of uh, related to uh, how our habits form and those things so we would observe that all came in the low frequency hence uh, while meditating also we have some low frequency uh, sounds effects hence uh, that gives us more soothing effect so just going into uh, vibration and hypnotism so as the spinning ring closed in on him batman quickly calculated its trajectory now that is what we are doing calculating its trajectory and leapt out of the way narrowing avoiding being hit narrowly avoiding being hit he then used his grappling hook to swing onto the spinning wheel where he engaged the ringmaster in a fierce battle. Now the ringmaster uses hypnotic powers to try and control Batman's mind, but the hero was able to resist using his mental fortitude. We have already talked in the first uh, comics that how tough Batman is. Mental fortitude and strength to push through the hypnotic effect. Hypnotic effect, sorry, hypnotic effect. With a well-timed punch, and uh, Batman knocked the ringmaster off the wheel and subdued him. 
with the ringmaster defeated batman was able to recover the stolen diamond and return to it to the museum as he left the amusement park he reflected on the importance of the non-linear thinking and quick reflexes in his line of work knowing that he has used both to outsmart the ringmaster and save the day which is actually our theme of our comics <laughs> so we what we will do we will be looking at uh, spinning things or rolling things or gears so we will be having those examples and you will be solving the equation of motion using language multiplier so this is our equation of motion in which ci we have to first find like this and for this ci we need this aji which we will get it from this constraint equation so first you have to write find the constraint equation first step then we have to find this a j i second step then we have to find this c i third step then we have to put it into equation of el equation or modified el equation and finally we have to find this lambda i so it's a five step process and we will look at the various example so first first example we don't we, we are going with the general concept now let's say ringmaster has summoned gear system such as this where So consider a system shown in this figure which represent a simple gear train connecting two inertias assumed to account for the gear intensity gear inertias as well now the gear have radii r1 and r2 and possess n1 and n2 teeth respectively it is desired to know the constraint force between the gears due to application of the applied torque tau t acting on the j1 inertia for the gear to mesh the geometric constraint may be stated as uh, so this is given this is first constraint equation so this is gear constraint hence we want the resulting equation of motion in term of theta1 only the constraint function would be written as so this is our constraint function this is the constraint equation now one way of going is from top to uh, bottom approach and then bottom to top approach so this question we are looking at top to bottom approach <laughs> we will find first kinetic energy and potential energy in potential energy we will put at this language multiplier because we know this is as zero this thing is equal to zero okay hence we are just adding it into lambda i <coughs> ne next is uh, Rayleigh dissipation function we we can take that also into account so it is just counteract counter of the non conservative forces now which gives us our lang region as this or we can say uh, augmented lang region now when we will be applying the lang region equation of motion in theta 1 coordinate we will be getting this equation and for theta 2 we are getting this equation and when we are substituting the constraint we will getting this equation so this equation is the most important one because it gives a physical meaning to language multiplier lambda actually that lambda was constraint torque acting on the gear connected by to inertia j2 required to force the gear to mesh so it is a force which is forcing the gear to mesh
Now upon substitution, we can we can see this equation of motion, and we can find that constraint force, which will be lambda by r two. <coughs> so that was constraint moment, and this is now constraint force. and from newton third also we can actually see the force acting on the gear connected to j1 would have same magnitude but opposite sign so this you can try but the question arise when to use euler language equation or when to use equation of motion so i think the simple explanation is this meme in which uh, if you are trying to solve the problem using high tech scientific techniques which can be solved using very simple things then don't do that please okay it will be like this situation now in the second problem uh, the ring master he summoned a ring and that ring was uh, rolling on an inclined plane and batman let's say batman is here and he had to just get away from this path and now we are finding out uh, how the things are behaving so we have two physical coordinates we will write kinetic energy potential energy then langrigian so this is our langrigian so this is now you routine task for you now we will start with constraint equation so this was our constraint equation and we have to put that into that constraint equation which was there okay so from constraint equation we found out aji <coughs> and from aji we found out ci next step and from ci we put it into euler equation of motion and we found out equation of motion and on solving of this equation of motion we found out lambda or language multipliers so that is our step so this is now bottom to top approach first we will look at the constraint equation we will find out aji then from aji we find out ci and from ci we find out uh, lambda i by putting them into the equation solving the equation of motion <coughs> next what he do along with rolling now it's spinning also okay that ring so so we have one more coordinate which will be uh, along with theta there is one more uh, variation of theta and uh, we will find equation of motion again using first find kinetic energy then find potential energy and then langrigian now we know that it's a pure rolling it's spinning but again pure rolling that is the main constraint we have like we cannot defy physics here so this is our constraint equation now from this constraint equation we this is the constraint equation
so from this constant equation we found out aji then we found out ci so from this ci we put it into equation of motion and which gave us equation of motion but with lambdas also so we can solve this lambda and find the value of lambda so see if this question would have been solved using newton's law of motion that it will be very tough but see in this simpler steps we have finally found out so there is one more uh, benefit of using this Euler equation of motion, Euler language equation of motion or Hamilton law because we can actually code them. So it's not we have to generate FBD for different different bodies and then we have to sum them up. Here we can go via, we have to just put energies and from these energies we can find uh, equation of motion directly. So actually Hamilton law uh, Hamilton law is much more uh, better than this but let's cover uh, this Euler language equation of motion now instead of uh, instead of rings now William has now started summoning the cylinders a lot of cylinders <laughs> so the cylinder rolling on a cylinder a circular cylinder of mass m and radius r1 rolls without slip on a fixed cylinder so this cylinder is fixed bigger cylinder find the equation of motion and the condition when the rolling cylinder will leave the surface of the fixed cylinder so similarly physical coordinates define kinetic energy potential energy then language languagean then this is a constraint equation and uh, from there we can find out aji from where we can find out ci from this ci we have to put it into equation of motion and we get equation of motion but in term of uh, language and multiplier and we can finally find those multipliers <coughs> so uh, yeah we are in last half hour so this is how uh, batman defeated the ringmaster and we are away from the hypnotic effects now but we are back to the logic okay so this is lecture 5 where extended hamilton principle were uh, introduced and i won't be going into much depth but i what i will be commenting on physical coordinate system and generalized coordinate system because this is the point where we start if we have any problem and we want to, to convert into equation of motion we start by thinking about what the coordinates will be now those coordinates are those independent to each other or uh, they are dependent of some sort so hence still we have Riddler problem here <coughs> Now Riddler is back with more questions. Let's see if you can help Batman. So this is Riddle 4. Now I will just wait if you will if you can give this answer. Now a ball is placed inside a 2D ball. Okay. Uh, so this is ball or bob and it is uh, in the 2D ball and 
it is fixed to the ground as shown in this figure and the ball at the given position is given an initial velocity v0 and that is tangential to the ball assume that the ball rolls without slipping how many degree of freedom are required to describe the motion of the ball justify your answer so our option 1 is 1 option 2 is 2 option 3 is others can you give the solution anyone who is online just three options option 1 option 2 option 3 the question is we just need to find degree of freedom of this problem so actually you can ask these question whenever you are teaching because these type of questions uh, are question which we can think okay it's as a simple answer but we kind of okay yes so uh, there is one solution that it could be one okay but let's uh, think it out it is not such a simple problem if it would had been a simple problem i would have not asked it so you can actually ask in your whenever you are teaching you can ask this because student nowadays have forget how to think okay so it's like we don't think practically now we just think okay this is the figure how can that figure and what can be said so we kind of assume pre-assume things so that thing which we have to get over with so uh, actually the correct answer is others because I haven't told you what this initial velocity is if this initial velocity is very high then can you say what the result will be it will go like this and fly off or do a projectile like this right so at this point it will just fly off okay so anything can happen like uh, after this the regime is different so anything can happen from after that point so up to this point is constrained via this then after this it will be constrained via uh, gravity okay so hence uh, there are two different constraint used hence we cannot comment on degree of freedom as of this point <coughs> so simply put if we look mathematically uh, we can say there are two heights h1 and h2 and h2 <coughs> h1 is height where it is right now and h2 is height which is the maximum height of this depth okay and since it is a circle we can relate those h1 and h2 as the uh, radius and theta so if <coughs> v0 is greater than this height then what will happen that the ball will leave the surface of this bowl and projectile thereafter okay and so only phi is a degree of freedom is not sufficient now if v0 is less than this height is the less than this term then the ball will be in contact with ball and it is single degree of freedom and we can actually take phi as degree of freedom so also there is no one solution it can be many solution now <coughs> somebody can say that this is constraint number one and down this is constraint number two from here to here it is constraint number one and after this is constraint number two so if you ask this question to someone uh, please see what he they are also replying because uh, somebody can say that I am de describing only one constraint which is having this two constraint in it okay then it's correct 
the option will be one is correct so whatever the answer is given by uh, pmgba so it's correct okay but if uh, if you cannot justify ki what is happening so hence please add justify to this question okay so this question was actually prepared by me and my professor and uh, so this kind of open the uh, students mind about things and they can watch it more practically so now next question is so these are all riddles <laughs> in mechanics now a bob is suspended on the massless string on the as shown as the figure now it is displaced from this equilibrium position at initial angle theta which is from 0 to pi and released now how many degree of freedom are required to describe the motion of the bob anyone want to try so actually it is in the same level like we are saying that theta is from 0 to pi 0 <coughs> being this and pi means 180 degree this so there could be many cases now one case is it's from pi so it will just drop down dead like from here from here it will just go down and up to here okay so the constraint will act only when <coughs> it is not zero or pi and uh, that too for some distance so if it is here at this point we can say that the only one constraint will act which is just this going into this string but if it is here it will first drop down at this point and then move like that okay so again there will be many cases and if you understand this question then there is nothing in the question but the point of is being practical about the questions <coughs> now this is similar question as the what we have solved previously so i already gave you the answer uh, a cylinder on the radius r1 is rolling without slipping on the another stationary cylinder which is having five times its radius how many degree of freedom is required to describe the motion of the smaller cylinder so if very small nudge is given or if that velocity is very high enough <coughs> then it will go a projectile okay that is also one case and let's say it is very small nudge is given then it will be from up to here it will be there and after that it will be dropping dead it won't go as this okay now next problem is a ball is rolling without slipping inside a semi circular ball which is fixed at the ground and the ball is uh, has a cavity of height h and the ball is released from given position as shown in the figure assume pure rolling and how many degree of freedom are required to describe the motion of the ball now this is very complex question because <coughs> for this you have to actually look at these edges are these edges parallel to each other or so you have to closely see what is happening here so if ball it goes from this to this point so it shouldn't be like this if it happen like this it will drop down so it should be well above this so here we need engineering on in this part <coughs> if we raise this part little bit the ball will actually cross this and then move and then again if you raise this part it will cross that point so it will be having this kind of motion without going into this cavity so 
so basic uh, cases can be made that if v naught is greater than under root 2 g r r being the radius of this whole semicircle ball the ball will leave the hemispherical ball and fall free fall thereafter okay so we are talking about the case where this ball is given like this velocity very high now if it is it is between this height as well as 2 g r now what will happen that ball will be in the contact of hemispherical ball and its single degree of freedom if theta is taken as coordinate <coughs> and third case if it is less than under 2 g h then it will fall into the cavity so there are three cases okay do we have time yeah we have 10 minutes we can actually cover this so language equation of motion uh, to sum up language equation of motion this is the equation of motion okay uh, so qi is independent coordinate necessary to describe system motion at any instant pi are the corresponding loading in each coordinate u is function of qi which is potential energy in term of coordinate t is some other function of qi dot square which is kinetic energy in term of system masses, mass inertia, linear angular velocities. Then R is something known as energy dissipation due to viscous friction or Rayleigh function. Now our language method is select a complete and independent set of coordinates QI, then identify loading and then derive T, U and R, substitute the result from our three point to previous slide equation. So uh, the last comics was about a batman just uh, landing from its batmobile and now we can abstract the situation like this now independent coordinates are x and theta then loading we can write such as this then energy dissipatum function we can write like this <coughs> And potential energy, kinetic energy, everything we can like write. Then we can find Langevin equation of uh, lang Langevin, and then we can find Langevin equation of motion using the similar thing which we have covered. Now, now we are coming from discrete dynamics to continuous dynamics. So there are a lot of questions. So these are the questions which Riddler is asking. The final question. Let's see if we can answer those. Um, so, first question: What is the difference between rope, chain, string, rod, bar, beam, column, and shaft? So we have in mostly in mechanical or civil or any where solid mechanics are taught. This is the common question. Then, what are some of the properties which actually define them? For example, a rope. What is actually known about the rope? We always say tension. Then chain again tension string again tension rod for rod we actually say how much axial uh, load it can take bar is again how much <coughs> torsion it can take then beam is how much bending it can take column is again uh, how much buckling it can take and shaft is again on how much torsion it can take okay so these are the properties which actually define them now what are the degree of freedom in these cases so for continuous system the degree of freedom is infinity <coughs> so also the Langevin formulation only for discrete particle dynamics so whatever we have learned is it only for discrete particle dynamics answer is no it is also defined for uh, continuous dynamics so how can we convert a discrete particle dynamics into continuous system so answer is method of induction okay so let's see what it is so first of all we will look at the case where it is single degree of freedom and we found out of equation of motion just we have already discussed this thing I think twice now what happens we have added one more pendulum to it interesting <coughs> 
now you can see the uh, calculation have increased as twice but we can finally end with nonlinear equation of motion now what happens if we take 3 so you can see <laughs> so there is a lot of maths now so and Robin is slapping Batman that that's why no more stupid math lesson so it will be very complex if we go at this it is very problem in our head also <laughs> so hence we are using uh, the summation signs okay so we will be using the summation sign so for n point we can define some functions so when whenever this summation sign is there we can define some functions and our main aim is to convert this from this okay a summation to an integration symbol so do you want to solve more math problem with me so you are saying no i don't do math now <coughs> when we linearize the system we are actually approximating it to a small angle and we are neglecting the higher order terms so this is the prime aim of uh, perturbation methods also approximation and then neglecting the higher order term and this is the equation which we will be getting so after a headache of maths we can come to this equation of motion okay but there is another way in which we can so that was the again top to bottom approach where we start with discrete particles and we kind of say that n is tending to infinity so it becomes a solid but there is another way by which we start with a solid only okay and we do define a small particle in that which is again the integration concept and we find its energies strain energies uh, then uh, kinetic energy then Langridgian and we can directly find the equation of motion without having to go into lot of that okay so this is just one page problem and this is about three to four page problem so this is where <coughs> the problem ends Actually, these two equations are same you, if you will see both attempting from different direction Something else is here. so this is why uh, you should be careful uh, because some problems are meant to be formulated using um, intelligent method okay it's like you have to be first thoughtful on which method you have to use on what type of problem because it's not like uh, you won't get answer you will get answer but it is the uh, thing about how much effort you have to put there okay so if you have coded it out then it's all right because uh, you are if using symbolic uh, toolboxes then it's well enough we know that it can perform that activity so you don't have to put that much effort into it but again that concept should be right so the basic thing which you can take from today's class is uh, there are a lot of methods and lot of depth into it so if you are picking up some method be perfect about it so so that when you are using we are you are confident and you don't think twice about because if you have moved forward then there is a point after that you have to be moving forward only if you go back and start again there is sometimes there is no time for that so finally riddle are solved and riddler is beat and let's see in future he comes or not uh, for right now every villain is in arkham asylum so we can go in the top yeah all these villains are in arkham asylum controlled in some manner so please uh, if you like this comics just comment or like it uh, 
this end my this session if you wanted to comment or add some other questions please do i will be adding whatever i asked here today and i will be putting it here <coughs> waiting for some reply the class time is officially over it's 8 pm thank you thank you okay great okay i will just uh, give my whatsapp number so you can actually um put doubts there also then i will be having a privilege of uh, asking that uh, or solving those question in next class <coughs> So this is my WhatsApp number. Huh. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I will officially end the class. Thank you. Stop recording.